Pardon my curiosity, but you don't appear to be one of Elrond's people. No. I am one of the woodland folk of Mirkwood. My name is Legolas Greenleaf, the son of Thranduil, king of the Woodland Realm. But I too am curious. You don't appear to be one of the men of Dale, nor one of the Bjornings. I am Eridan, one of the rangers of the north, the Dunedain. Ah, one of those who follow Aragorn, son of Arathorn. He is our chieftain, yes. But how is it that you know Aragorn in distant Mirkwood? Aragorn is a great traveler. Although he is not a frequent guest in my father's realm, he is known and honored there all the same. What brought you on such a long and perilous journey? Unpleasant business. My father sent me to report the escape of Gollum, a creature Aragorn had entrusted to our care. What can you tell me about this Gollum? A pathetic creature who long held the Ring of Power. The evil of the Ring has left him twisted and tormented. His only thought is to recover what was taken from him. How did Gollum manage to escape your guard? Not from a lack of watchfulness, but perhaps from too much kindness. We occasionally allowed Gollum to go about the wood under close guard. But on one of these ventures, the guards were attacked by orcs from Dol Guldur. In the confusion, Gollum escaped. We followed his track southward for many leagues, until it drew near to Dol Guldur. There, it became too dangerous to pursue him any further. What is this place, Dol Guldur? A stronghold of the enemy in the south of Mirkwood. It was once the dwelling of the Dark Lord, until he was driven out in the year of the Dragon's Fall. But it has once again become a place of great evil. All the darkness that besets Mirkwood has its source in Dul Guldur. Tell me about Mirkwood. Mirkwood is the greatest woodland in all of Middle-earth. It was called Greenwood the Great, before the shadow of Sauron fell over it. In ages past, it was a place of great beauty. But now, it is filled with darkness and dread. Save only in the north, where my father's realm is maintained. Will you be departing for your home soon? No. I have been chosen to represent Elven Kind among the Company of the Ring. I will be accompanying the halfling, Frodo Baggins, on his journey south. It seems strange that with so many Elves in his own household to consider, Elrond chose to make you a member of the Fellowship. I asked for the privilege, and Elrond did not refuse me. I feel he may have been relieved not to lose any of his household to this quest. He will have need of all his strength, should the enemy move against him Lardris. I am curious why you would volunteer for this. Partially to make amends for the loss of Gollum, but more so because this will be the final chapter in our long struggle against the darkness. And I wish to have a hand in our final victory. Or at least, to stand in the forefront of our last act of defiance. May fortune favor your fellowship in the days ahead, Legolas. Welcome, Aradan. I suspected you would find your way here before long. What task are you working at now? My fellow smiths and I are preparing for a great work. Soon we will be called upon to reforge the legendary sword Narsil. In the meantime, I have been sharpening my skills by practicing the art of imbuing gemstones. What can you tell me of this sword, Narsil? Narsil was the sword of Elendil, a mighty lord of the Dúnedain who defied the Dark Lord in the War of the Lost Alliance. He bore the sword in battle against Sauron, but he was slain and the sword was broken. Since that time, the shards of the sword have been an heirloom of the House of Elendil. It was to remain broken until the day when an heir of Elendil would go to war to reclaim the crown and title of king. That day will come soon, and the sword must be made whole once again. What do you mean by imbuing? Simply that certain objects have inherent virtues, and a skilled artisan can, through his craft, increase those virtues and bind them to an object for advantage. Gemstones are very strong vessels for this process. 
Sadly, appropriate gemstones have become difficult to find. The growing trouble throughout the land keeps travelers away, and our own people are staying closer to home. Perhaps I can help you with that. I will be traveling soon. I would be pleased to have your help. I will provide you with a list of the types of gemstones that are of the greatest value to me. If you collect the stones, I am certain I could create something that you would find useful. But to be of use, the gemstones must be of the highest quality. Fortunately, we have as a guest a dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. Glowin is his name, and he is skilled in the appraisal of gems of all sorts. Once you have gathered the stones, allow him to examine them. He'll know if they are suitable. Eridan, it is good of you to seek me out. You have grown into a fine man of the Dunedain. Your recent deeds of valor have proven your worth. When first we spoke, you said you recently passed through the Ettenmoors. Can you tell me more? It is a rough and empty land, home to many trolls. I passed through with great haste, for I needed to reach Rivendell as quickly as I could. And you saw no sign of trolls? I saw neither trolls nor fresh signs of them, and that disturbs me more than encountering one. I doubt they've all packed up and left. Mindless brute creatures they may be, yet they can be used and driven to even greater wickedness by a strong enough hand. Agendauer could well be forming them into an army. You believe he is mustering the trolls for an attack? That is my fear. I would gladly be proven wrong. But my heart misgives me that somewhere in the Ettenmoors, you will find them gathering and being prepared for war. We must know. Such a force could be sent against Rivendell, perhaps in hopes of capturing the Ring. Then I'll gather my friends and scout the Moors. We'll learn the truth of the matter. The sun shines and all is fair and peaceful here in Elmatris. A far cry from the blood and dust of Fornast, is it not? You and your companions did very well there. Indeed, things might have gone badly for us had you not been there. You have earned some time to recover from the toils of battle and hard travel. And I believe you will find no place better for the restoration of body and spirit than this, our home. I may be in need of a few things before we set out. Is there anyone I can speak to about that? If it is provisions or other supplies you need, you should speak with Alari. And if your arms and armor need tending, seek out Angmir. Both of them may be found nearby. How was it you happened to be at Fornost? We often ride far afield hunting the orcs, wherever we may find them. We came upon signs of a large band of goblins making their way from the orc hold of Mount Gram and followed their trail to Fornost, where we lost no time in attacking them. Aragorn frequently travels and fights beside you, does he not? Yes, we often venture forth in company with the Dúnedain, and none more frequently than Aragorn. He was raised here in our household, after all. 
I wish you luck. Goodbye. I thought it rare to find one dwarf so far from home. Yet here is another. If I may say, there's something about you that reminds me of my companion Farron. Gimli, son of Glowen, at your service. Your eyes serve you well, Ranger. Farron is indeed a kinsman of mine and a most valiant dwarf. And if I may say, your own fame has gone before you. You fought well at Fornost, and I hear much praise of your exploits. Most impressive, though of course you had Farron's help. <laughs> I must concede the usefulness of a dwarf in battle. He wields his weapon to good effect, as long as he stays clear of my knees. Useful? I dare say you'll find him more than useful. Why, he's a hero of the Battle of the Five Armies. Men, elves, and dwarves against orcs and goblins. And many an orc has felt the caress of his axe. Farron said no word of other kin coming to join him. What brings you here to Emladris? Aye, it's a long march from the halls of Erebor, but grim news goes on swift feet. It was for Bilbo's sake we came, with a warning that the servants of Sauron wished to find him and his ring. Thrice a black rider came to the front gate of Erebor, demanding news of Bilbo, and threatens to return once more. Ere that should happen, King Dane sent my father, Glowen, to seek the advice of Elrond. You've heard the results of the council? I see you have. I have sworn to protect Frodo upon his quest, an oath I will fulfill though all the orcs of Middle-earth stand in my way. When do you leave for the south? Not soon enough for my liking. Elrond is sending scouts many leagues in all directions, and we will wait for their news. They search for signs of any Nazgul that may have survived the flooding of the river. And there are other threats besides, as you well know. My heart forebodes that the north is not safe. Elrond has asked us to scout the Edenmoors, but what is it that worries you about the North? I like not what I've heard of this Agandar you drove from Fornost. He could yet cause grief untold. There are rumors of gatherings of orcs, goblins, and other deadly foes growing in strength. When the Dark Lord strikes, there will be more than one land that feels his wrath. I fear for the Shire and Rivendell. It would ease my heart to know that you'll look to the defense of the North for as long as you're needed. With help from Farron, of course. For my part, you have my word on it. And I have no doubt your trustworthy kinsman and Andriel will stand by my side. You are Aradan, aren't you? I was hoping I would get a chance to speak with you. And you are Frodo Baggins. Aragorn and Gandalf have told me about you. And your burden. Likewise, they have told me all about you. I wanted to thank you and your friends for all you did to keep us safe on our journey to Rivendell. You are most welcome, Frodo. It is only now that we have learned just how important our task was. I am pleased we were able to help. It seems as if I owe everyone thanks. You, Aragorn, Elrond, without the help of each of you, I wouldn't be here now. Will you tell me about your journey here? Clearly, it was not an easy one. We had trouble almost from the start. The Black Riders were always just behind us, and we nearly met disaster in the Burrow Downs, at Bree, and again at Weathertop. Anyone who travels far in the wild is certain to find peril. These are dangerous times. I've learned that only too well. I had hoped the danger would end once I reached Rivendell, but it seems as if it is just beginning. I hope I can find the courage to face the road ahead. I have a strong feeling you will. In the meantime, you should rest and recover your strength. Well, my friend, it's an honor to make the acquaintance of one of Farin's valiant companions. I'm Glowen, son of Groen, from the Lonely Mountain. 
and one of Bilbo's companions in the quest to slay the dragon Smaug. It's an honor to meet such a famous dwarf. I'm Eridan of the Dúnedain. I heard about that business at Sarn Ford, and they say that three of you brought down an orc chieftain at Fornost. <laughs> I expect I'll be hearing of even greater deeds before long. It does my heart good to see a dwarf, an elf, and a man working together again. <laughs> Reminds me of the old days it does, when the three kindred fought alongside one another in the Battle of the Five Armies. What could have been important enough to bring you all the way from your distant home? I came at the bidding of my lord, King Dane. My son Gimli and a few companions came with me, for all paths grow dangerous under the spread of the shadow. With the enemy seeking news of Bilbo, Dane thought we should come to Elrond for counsel. I never imagined what I'd learn when we got here, but it may be wise to say no more. Aragorn has told us that Frodo bears the One Ring. Alas, that we should live in such times. Well, Frodo knows what he must do. If I were younger, I'd go with him. But we must each serve where we are most needed, even as you must, with such friends as you trust. And where do you think I am needed the most? That's plain as the beard on my face. It's right here, of course. You've uncovered a deadly enemy in this Agandaur. As long as he's free to carry out Sauron's will, he'll gather more orcs, goblins, and trolls to his banner. Rivendell, the Shire, the Breelands, no place will be safe from his wrath. He must be stopped. Sauron's attention will be focused largely on the south. Perhaps if we thwart his plans here, it will distract him. That could benefit Frodo and the Fellowship on their quest. That's my thoughts upon the matter, too. Be the stinging fly in the ointment, as it were. <laughs> Only this fly's sting will be deadly. And it's time to be about your business. Goodbye, and good luck to you. Welcome, Dunedain. Welcome to Imladris. Are you in need of anything to help you in your travels? I have many things in my keeping that might serve you well.
Those who venture into the wild must be well prepared. Examine the goods Imladris has to offer. Hello, you are one of the Duna Dine, are you not? Please allow me to introduce myself. Bilbo Baggins at your service. Eredun, at yours. Always happy to meet one of the Guardians of the North. I've heard about what you and your friends did to help my Frodo and the Duna Dan reach Rivendell safely. You'll have to tell me all about it one of these days so I can write it. Write it down? Are you then a chronicler, Mr. Baggins? A chronicler? Oh, oh. No more of an enthusiastic scribbler, really. History is just one of my interests. Lately, I've been working on poetry, mostly. Say, maybe you could help me with that. I'm writing a poem for Aragorn, and I'm a bit stuck on a line or two. Is that so? Well, then, let me hear what you have. Uh, very well, very well. Uh, the verse that's giving me trouble runs like this. Ahem. <clears throat> the light from the west is rekindled. Forth from Imladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. The light from the west is rekindled. Forth from Imladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. The scion of Westernies kings. Why, yes, yes, that's just the thing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my friend, you should consider exchanging those weapons of yours for the poet's pen. One day, perhaps. But for now, we have more need of warriors than poets. Oh, I'm afraid you're right, but since these old hands are not much use with the sword, I'll just keep on with the pen. Though I'll need some help. Perhaps you could show this to the Lady Arwen. She has her people's gift with words, and this touches her deeply, after all. Arwen? Who is she? Why, she's Elrond's daughter, of course, and Aragorn's beloved as well. Although you didn't hear that from me, she's a sweet lady, and I'm sure she'd be willing to give me a hand with this. I will take it to her. Ah, thanks very much. Uh, be sure to give her my compliments, won't you? I will indeed. Farewell now. My Govanen. Well met, and welcome to the safe haven of Imladris. My Gavanen, Lady Arwen. It is a great honor. The Dúnedain are always welcome here. You have endured great danger and given us urgent warning of a new threat to the North. For this, we honor you, Eridan. It is my duty as a ranger, nothing more. I am glad to be of service to my Lord Aragorn. You show the modesty worthy of a hero. Estelle and my brothers have spoken highly of your courage at Fornost, and I thank you for your part in seeing to my brother's safe return. Please, take your ease and rest a while in our halls. You will find all your heart could desire, whether it be food, drink, song, or storytelling. I have an errand I must not forget. Here is an unfinished poem from Bilbo. He asked for your opinion and advice, saying the subject is very close to your heart. Then it must be about Estelle. 
He is fond of writing verses in honor of his good friend, and therefore often comes to me for advice. You may leave it with me, Eridan. I will give it some thought and answer him myself. Thank you, lady. Perhaps the time will come when I can enjoy these gentle arts, but that time is not today. Your father has tasked me with scouting the Edmores. Then I will not keep you, but we may be of service to one another. I am helping my father brew a potion known as Miravore. One sip of Miravore can renew heart and soul and bring new vigor to weary limbs. I am in short supply of certain rare ingredients that may be found in the Etanmores. If I gave you a list of the ingredients, perhaps you could bring any you find while carrying out your mission. With enough ingredients, I will return the favor by brewing an extra flask that you may have for your own use. Gladly, Lady Arwen. That is a generous offer. Should I find what you require, I will return to you once my mission is complete. Greetings to you, Eridan. I am pleased to welcome you to my home. I had heard your name spoken with praise by Aragorn even before these recent events. You have more than proven the value of his judgment. The Dúnedain are often our guests here in Imladris, but I would be pleased if you would consider this house as your home whenever you may have need of it. But I gather you are here for more than an exchange of pleasantries. Do you have questions for me? I found this scroll at Fornost. I thought it best to bring it to your attention. A wise decision. This is writ in the black speech of Mordor, a language I will not utter here. It is intended to instruct the reader in the use of dark sorceries. We encountered orcs at Fornost who used spells against us. Then it seems this has already been put to use. That is grim news. The Dark Lord is a master of necromancy and other foul sorceries. He has taught these abominations to men in the past, but never, to my knowledge, to orcs. Another weapon in Sauron's hands. What can we do to prevent this evil from spreading further? I will destroy this scroll, at the very least. But wait, here I discover more. Listen to what is written herein. Scribed by the hand of Agandaur, disciple of the great Lord Sauron, for the empowerment of his servant Wolfram and those others of his faithful who prove worthy. I will speak no more of these blasphemies, but it does say that this scroll is one of seven such works. So six more remain. Perhaps we can capture them as well. That would be a great service to our cause. Should you recover them all, bring them to me, and I will ensure they are destroyed. I will be certain to do so. In the meantime, please accept this in appreciation for bringing this matter to my attention. Perhaps it will be of service to you in your travels. There is something else. I found this tome hidden amid the ruins at Fornost. It appears to be quite old. Ah, now this is writing of an altogether more wholesome sort. This was not made by any minion of Sauron, but rather by the men of Arthedain, likely before the fall of Fornost. The pages are too worn and the writing too faded for me to make out much. Perhaps you can discover more. Indeed. It seems to be a personal journal. And here is a name inscribed. M-A-L. Why, this appears to be a work of Malbeth, the seer of Arthedain. Tell me about this realm of Arthedain. Arthedain was the last fragment of the great northern kingdom of Arnor. The heirs of Isildur ruled as kings of Arthedain until it too was destroyed by the enemy. The pages are too worn and the writing too faded for me to make out much. But Indeed, it seems to be a... Malbeth? The name seems somewhat familiar. Many of the Dúnedain race are gifted with foresight, but none more than Malbeth. He predicted the final destruction of the kingdom of Arthedain which befell exactly as he had foretold. 
I will examine this work carefully. Who knows what other visions are here recorded? It may be that we will find something of value to us in this time of trouble. You did well in bringing this to me. Take this in way of thanks. Is there anything more you can tell me about this mission to the Etten Moors? Only that the Etten Moors are a dangerous place at the best of times. The danger will be that much greater if the orcs and trolls are being organized by an outside force. You and your friends will need to have your wits about you. Who could raise such a muster? Agendaur would be my first guess, but it could also be a strong orc chieftain, or perhaps an unusually cunning troll. At worst, one or more of the Nazgul may have made their way there, if any of their mounts survived the flood we unleashed upon them. Whatever may be happening there, you will know of it. Farewell, Master Elrond. This is rough country, no mistake. But so far, we've seen no sign of trouble. But the moors stretch on for many leagues. It would be easy to miss something in these rugged crags and valleys. Let us continue the search, but be wary. More than one ranger has been lost in these wild lands. Creatures! Yeah! <laughs> 